Oi! Oi! Get, I can't see! Thank you. That is a violent in the garden. Welcome to another episode of Tropey Stupid Vlog! We've come for a little walk in uh, the grounds of Chorleywood House to get out because it's quite nice, as you can see, a nice day. And to kind of get people moving a bit. Albert and Anna are back at the house and the rest of us have come to a bit of a stroll. <laughs> we're still trying to plan where we're going to go out to eat when we get to Bristol, which is proving more difficult than we thought whilst having a little wander around. Check out this boy and his giant twig. <laughs> Basically, also had a small stick and it broke. And then he found a branch and he's now dragged it about half a mile down the hill. <laughs> Don't know how long this is gonna last. It certainly won't fit in the car on the way back. It's like five times bigger than he is. Well, it's a very understated sign. is Stoke Newton's graveyard park. It's somehow much spookier when trees start growing in between the gravestones. So this is my Hogan. And I'm walking down towards this red brick building that is behind the McDonald's advert. There we go, over there. So I film something with a bit on the fourth floor. The De Vere Hotel. It looks quite an interesting building actually. This is the setup of the day. I have a camera here, filming a presentation, and another camera there. And then everyone's sitting around being educated. And we've got like four different talks and a welcome thing. This is the uh, outside of this remarkable structure. I'm trying to find out what it used to be and this. Not as much information as I'd like at the moment. I'm going to show you some of this remarkable building and its weird ceramic staircases. And this is a proper old library. With little staircases that take you up to the balcony. Day two up in Hyburn, from the the Redford building is a pointy roof, which I'm going, which is, oh, I found out a bit of history about it actually. It was built as the Credential Assurance building, so it was quite a striking piece of work that was completed and it was modified probably in the 30s and added all the loads of Art Deco features. I showed you that crazy staircase yesterday. It was built on the site of Furnival Inn, which is one of the inns of court, which started off as places where barristers worked and learnt their trade but over time became places that they lived and became frankly largely um, residential in their latter years um, and the only other one around here that still exists I'll show you in a moment. Here it is, when I say it still exists obviously what I mean is the building does, it's turned into a road shop so that is when the original in the building is in fact the only one that's here you can still see. It's quite impressive that you get a good view of it from um, where we're going on the fourth floor. So this is the entrance. I showed you a bit of that courtyard yesterday, and this is where I'm going. It's all weird and wonderful bits. Take one more bit of footage of the outside of this magnificent building. It's been working out the last couple of days. As I'm on my way home. Good morning. It is Friday, so it's the last day of the week, but it is also the first day of the penultimate Grand Prix of the season, 
and the last Grand Prix that I'm working. Are there enough numerical confusers in that sentence? It's both the first day and the last day and the penultimate race. So there we go. Um, so I'm going for a little walk because I haven't had as much of an opportunity this week because I've been working for too long. So this is my little um, get out as it were. So it's a surprisingly quiet time of the morning. It's, it's immediately after rush hour has finished. Well before lunchtime shenanigans. And uh, the fact that the weather looks a bit undecided. I'm assured it's going to be lovely, at least for the next couple of hours, but it certainly doesn't give that impression. It seems to have scared everyone off. Plus, high tides have just been and gone, so you can see the paths rather muddy. So all these things work in my favour and having a rather empty towpath to walk down. It's very nice. And um, so today is uh, the 10th of November. Yesterday was the 28th anniversary of the Berlin Wall coming down, uh, which I remember very vividly. I remember watching coverage of it um, on the TV when I got home, so sort of early afternoon news. And then there was a power cut. <laughs> And I had to write a school report, and uh, I did it by candlelight. I remember doing that. So I must have that book somewhere. And it's actually got like on my report there is literally candle wax drippings all over it. Um, and because it's that, you know, we're getting on to that point of the year. It doesn't mean that you know bonfire night's done and uh, Halloween's done and Christmas is starting, just starting up really. Before then, we're going to find an excuse to go for. A Thanksgiving meal because as I've said before Thanksgiving is a great festival that we should embrace really despite the horrible historical um, associations with killing out a native population with smallpox basically um, the principle of being nice to one another and giving thanks for what you have is very solid so on that basis we should probably do a hasty word of the week because I don't think I've done one so far. Um, so this week's word of the week is thanks or thank you. Um, so first of all in German, uh, thank you is Dankeschön, which I'm sure you've heard the song, um, or just shortens to Danke. So there we go, that's thanks in German and in Italian, it's very simple, you've probably heard this as well. Italian thank you is grazie. So there we go. Those are the word of the weeks in various different languages. There's a little bit of a rainbow there which bothers me slightly because there's as yet no water coming out of this cloud that I can see. But it could just be the light through the clouds causing that. This looks nice down here. Simpsons-esque clouds. So I'm just going to keep walking until I've cleared this grey thing. Good horizontal wind here. Just straight across the path. And yes, there has been a bit of rain, so um, damn it weather forecasting. quickly and they went from no wind to lots. So I've been doing this vlog for seven and a half years and the most established vloggers out there really have been doing it for about eight and a half and I wanted to talk a little bit about personal broadcasting. Not least because it was also the Student Radio Awards last night and the same lessons can be applied to both. So um, pretty much every day now you see someone walking as I am now talking to themselves in a the camera. There's vloggers everywhere. Um, there's you know niche vloggers of every variety. I've seen a fitness vlogger today. There's obviously a lot of travel vloggers and food vloggers and all sorts. Um, but what there isn't, it seems to me, is a defined level of professionalism. And I say that as a man who does this every day and still isn't very good. But the thing is, I know that and I know that for a number of reasons, not least because I worked in the broadcast industry for so long but I think I know what makes a good link and how to construct a sentence that people can actually understand. 
Um, and also not forgetting that this is a long way from a professional vlog. I'm not doing this to make any money, and this is not my work or my business. This is a purely a hobby. But my two pet peeves that I see a lot, and consider this a free coaching lesson, if you will, are firstly, sentences riddled with cliches, and um, stock phrases that are used when people haven't really thought about what they want to say. And it just sounds shit. There's no two ways about it, it sounds shit. Um, and at very least, it sounds like everybody else. There's nothing distinct about it. It's not your words. That's the key point. Um, so don't do it. Think about the sentence before you say it. And if it's important to you, actually go through it a couple of times and come up with the words that you're going to use. It doesn't mean script it, because you can tell when something's read. But think about the beginning, the middle, and the end. And then you don't need to chuck in a load of cliches and stop phrases. And the second thing that makes you sound intensely amateur is to constantly refer to your audience as guys or everyone and this sort of presumption that there's a sort of mass group of people all together listening or watching you. Um, that isn't how most media is consumed. It's one-on-one. -on -one. You're talking to an individual, so you should address them as such. You need to be personal and it needs to not be throwaway. You know, it's not just like, oh, hey guys. Think about it a bit more, actually have a, have a dialogue with them. Uh, the last thing, which I'll mention now that the wind's dropped, is audio quality is important. <laughs> learn how to edit audio, learn what is acceptable and what isn't. It's very straightforward, there's free editing programs. Actually do the work. If you want something to be your business, learn how to do it first. That's all I would say. There's no point being the world's greatest fitness instructor and simultaneously hosting the world's shittest fitness vlog because you're going to waste a lot of time and energy for no real gain. So if you want to be a fitness vlogger, learn the basics of videoing, audio editing and how to construct a sentence. There endeth the rant. Last thing, you might not be any good at it. This is a hard lesson in life generally. You might think it's very important, you might even really enjoy it but you might not be any good at it. If you're not any good at it, my strong advice is you should not be doing it professionally. If you really feel that your business needs something like that, then maybe the thing to do is find someone who is very good at it and get them to do it instead. Someone's having a firework display. Nice on a Friday night. That's it for this week. Thank you very much for joining me. I very much hope that you'll be back here to watch more of this nonsense next week and be told you're wrong again. <laughs> um, so yes, the links as always are from the little eye in the corner or the annotations, whatever they're calling them nowadays. The end screen annotations, that's the one, which will come up at the end of this video. So thanks again and see you later. Don't be stupid for